The basic claims of art history as a discipline are like we can tell something about people and places from the things that they made and saw. And I think if that's true for like, you know, church art, museum art, stuff that's in being rich people's country houses, it must be particularly true for the images that people mark on their bodies. And so what the book does through 20 historical figures, plus my great grandma, she's the 21st, is use a tattoo for an anchor point to something beyond just a tattoo. But at the same time, I think, you know, tattooing gets you access to intimate personal stories. So the book covers 12th century China, the story of Yue a military hero, who was tattooed by his mother, reportedly with a sort of symbol of allegiance to the nation. There's a story in the book about Histiaeus, a tyrant from ancient Greece, um, who used tattooing as a way of conveying a secret message to start a rebellion. And the book sort of, every chapter does something like that, you know, and we start from, from 5,000 years BCE and we come right up pretty much to the present day. And if you love tattooing, there's a lot in there for you, but if you don't care about tattooing at all, I think um, you'll still get a lot out of the book, you know. Tattooing is, is, is everyone's art. And I think the reason the book's called Painted People is because that term has been used to try and demarcate one culture from another. Even the word for Britain perhaps means something like land of the painted people. And we find descriptions of painted people in North America, in China, in the Western Pacific, like all over the place. People have, are self-identified or called their rivals the painted people or the tattooed people. And I think actually, if there's an overarching lesson in the book or a story of the book, I think it's that far from separating us from one another, tattoos connect us together. It's actually probably the one thing that all human cultures have in common, ironically enough, you know? Every academic subject, by definition, almost every PhD is niche. And tattooing, of course, is very niche, but from any kind of niche academic question, whatever you're doing, whether it's particle physics or philosophy or, or any kind of random strange thing that your PhD's about, bigger things will follow. And I think that's almost a lesson in the book, right? Like, from my kind of weird obsession with like pictures of old sailors looking cool with their green arms, you know, that like I thought was the coolest thing ever when I was like eight, nine years old. From that comes stories about people and human lives and how we think about each other and how we treat each other and, and how we think about all the things that we all have in common and all the things that separate us as, as individuals and cultures. That's something I've learned along the way. You know, I didn't know that at the start. I'm a tattoo fan first and a historian second, and I became a historian because of this interest. And I'm privileged and happy like every single day that I get to share what I know with other people. And I say, you know, I say all the time, if I didn't talk about this stuff, write it down, teach about it, uh, it'd be less a career and more of a mania. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really glad and honored that I get to, you know, people are, people are interested enough to to listen to what I have to say.